Come and listen to my story about a man named Jed. A poor mountaineer barely kept his family fed. And then one day he was shooting at some food. And up through the ground come a bubbling crude. Oil, that is. Black gold. Texas tea. Well, the first thing you know, old Jed's a millionaire. The kinfolk said, Jed, move away from there. Said, California is a place you ought to be. So they loaded up the truck and they moved to Beverly. Hills, that is. Swimming pools, movie stars. The Beverly Hillbilly. Daisy, you's coming to England with us to hunt them skinny old oafs and serfs. Trouble is, Granny says I can't take you, so I've got to hide you in this here bag. See, there's plenty of room and lots of air too. Get through. The taxi cab is here to take us to the airport. We's coming. I mean, I'm coming. Okay, Daisy, now hop in and keep your big mouth shut. <laughs> I blame you for the whole mess, Miss Hathaway. And believe me, this trip to England is coming out of your salary. But I'm stopping right here. No, 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 keep going. We missed that plane, the Clapperts will get to London without us. Then let's hear no more talk blaming me. You're the one who hired that cheap British actor to impersonate the Queen's minister. He's the one who sold them Canada. Okay, okay. The important thing is to keep them from going to Buckingham Palace and giving that phony deed to the Queen. Now, Chief, look on the bright side. But bright side. Why, well, they even had that miserable truck flown to London. I still say there's a bright side. Ah, uh, what is it? When I think of one, you'll be the first to hear it. <laughs> He's coming, Granny. Why ain't he with us? Well, he's just upset because you wouldn't let him bring along Ellie's turkey buzzers to hunt oafs. Well, I aim to do some sleeping betwixt here in England. And at my age, I ain't stretching out and closing my eyes in the same room with no buzzers. <laughs> Real quiet, Daisy. And as quick as we get to England, we'll go to hunt oats. <laughs> Would you like me to take that for you? Oh, no. She's fine. It's fine. I'll tell you what you can do. You can let us know when we fly over Canada. I'd be happy to. It belongs to us, you know. We bought it yesterday. <laughs> hey, Uncle Jen, this little old gal don't believe that we own Canada. Show her the D. Get through. Will you stop yapping about us owning Canada? It's only ours till we give the deed back to the Queen. And as quick as that's done, we's going to our castle and fight the War of the Roses. We can't fight the War of the Roses till we put down the rabble uprising. Well, when are we gonna get me my knight in shining armor? Now, don't worry, Ellie. We'll trot you to the first knight that comes riding by the castle hunting dragons. <laughs> Ah, we made it. Howdy, Mr. Drysdale, Miss Jane. I'll sit here with Jethro. You keep Ellie company. Right, Chief. Say, Miss Jane, Mr. Drysdale's looking rather poorly. I know, Granny. It's a good thing you're a doctor. <laughs> If you look out the window, you can see Winnipeg. Winnipeg? We're over Manitoba now, and pretty soon we're going to be flying over Ontario. I don't care nothing about that. Just tell me when we get to Canada. <laughs> you know, Jethro, I'm sure glad I'm sitting beside the educated member of the family. <laughs> you make a great brain surgeon. <laughs> some chitlins in my pocket. No, thanks. I was talking to my friend in the bag there. <laughs> you 
have a friend? Shh. I smuggled her on board. Well, who is she? Give you three guesses. Elizabeth Taylor. Guess again. Give me a hint. William? She's got a long nose, beady eyes, scaly legs, and three toes on each foot. <laughs> Miss, could I have a tranquilizer? Oh, of course. Your first flight? My last. <laughs> beady eyes, scaly legs, three toes on each foot. And her first name's Daisy. Oh, she's sitting back there with Mr. Clampett. <laughs> okay, I give up. Open the bag. Oh, no, not here. Uncle Jed will give me the dickens. But you can open it up in the washroom. You know, I'm just curious enough to do that. <laughs> Don't scare her. I won't. <laughs> Sure glad you're going to England with us, Miss Jean. Yeah, and quick as we give the deed to Canada back to the Queen, you can help us fight the War of the Roses. Now, oh, Granny. <laughs> Excuse me, but I think the War of the Roses has already been fought. No, it was supposed to be fought last year, but Sir Chicken here tucked his tail, twixt his legs, and run. I said it before, and I'll say it again. I ain't traveling 6,000 miles to scrap with the folks in the next castle. That's it's the War of the Roses? Yes, ma'am. Jethro started it. No! They started it when they sicked their dogs on Jethro when he run the dragon through their roses. Hey, Freddy, that'll do. <laughs> Good grief. You and your three-toed redhead. I told you she wasn't Elizabeth Taylor. You didn't tell me it was a bunch. Shh. You let the cat out of the bag. I wish it had been a cat. I almost got flapped to death. Daisy, you have not a... Where is she? In the washroom. And if you want her back in that bag, you put her there. Gee, what happened? Oh, nothing, nothing. Sit down. Anything you need? Yeah, I need to have my head examined. <laughs> There's a feather in your hair. Don't tell me how it got there. Granny, he done something stupid, and he don't want to talk about it. Thanks, Jethro. <laughs> Did you find out what happened to Mr. Drydale? I think I got it figured out what happened to him, Jed. When he went up front there, he stuck his head out the window, and a bird hit him. <laughs> We're flying pretty hard for birds. What about geese? Ain't you often know, you get a goose this high either. Well, he got one, scratched his scalp. That could be dangerous so close to the brain. It could come down with goose fever. You gonna treat him? He didn't want me to. He's ashamed of what he'd done, I guess. Well, sticking your head out of the window of an airplane going 600 miles an hour ain't exactly the smartest thing in the world. <laughs> Wait a minute. Where are you going? I'm going to powder my nose. No, don't go in there. Why not? <laughs> it's hit him, Jed. Who? What? Mr. Drysdale, goose fever. Look at him, flapping his wings. <laughs> but I'll be doggone. Is there anything we can do? It's reached his brain. Next, he'll stand on one foot, tuck his head under his arm, and go to sleep. Now, we can't help him at all? Once it gets that bad, about all you can do is force feed him and sell his liver. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> Tranquilizer helped any, sir. Oh, yes, I feel fine now. Thanks. Oh, good, you're welcome. You're in trouble now. What do you mean? Another victim just went into the buzzard roost. <laughs> Granny, why do you suppose the chief is acting so strangely? I hate to tell you, Miss Jane, but it's goose fever. Goose fever? He stuck his head out the window up there and got hit by a high-flying goose. It's impossible. It is, huh? Look yonder. Another one's done it. <laughs> He'll be having a seizure any minute. The goose scratches is right next to his brain. <laughs> Huh. What happened to you?
you, sir. There's a big bird in there. A bird? Yeah, it clawed me and it flapped me. See? There he goes. I think you're mistaken, sir, but uh, I'll check it out. Don't go in there. They'll get flapped silly with those big wings. <laughs> All right, sir. I tell you what, why don't you return to your seat and I'll get somebody to investigate it. You think this will cure his goose fever, Granny? No, but it'll quieten him down so he won't go flying around the cabin. <laughs> Here you are. Take this. It'll make you feel better. Oh, thanks. I can use a drink of water. <laughs> wow! <laughs> what was that? Smoky Mountain Susan Sheriff. <laughs> Who are you? I'm Mother Goose. Now you just tuck your head under your wing and rest. <laughs> okay, she's back in the bag, but she ain't too happy, though. You scared her. I scared her. <laughs> Goodbye. Hope you enjoyed your flight. And did you enjoy your flight, sir? Oh, yeah, the plane ride was nice, too. <laughs> Bye. 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 Goodbye. Goodbye, sir. Have a shame. Bye. What are you doing? Miss Jane said they won't let me take my buzzer through customs. So I'm going to turn her loose here, and she'll meet us in front of the airport. She'll meet us? Heck yeah. I got her trained to fly around and land on the truck. Come on, Daisy. Listen, Jethro, wait. Uh, why don't you go ahead and get the truck, and I'll smuggle Daisy through customs. Okay, swell. I'll meet everybody in front of the airport. Chief, you'll never get that buzzer through customs. They'll quarantine it. Exactly. I've had enough of this bird for one trip. <laughs> someone actually tried to get this repulsive bird through customs? Yes, sir. His name's Drysdale. He's in your office right now with some other rather odd Americans. That's why I stopped you on the plane. I got locked in the washroom with that thing and it flopped me up one wall and down the other. Drysdale's having another seizure. Poor man. I gotta help him. Mr. Drysdale, please. That's me. Don't you know that birds have to be quarantined in a cage for six months before they can enter this country? Wait a minute. He ain't no bird. He only thinks he is. Granny, I beg your pardon. He's got goose fever. Granny, please. I'm going to help you, Mr. Drysdale. Madam, I was referring to the repulsive creature he brought off the plane. Shame on you. That's his secretary. You think I can do, Granny? Yes. You can learn this goomer some manners. He wants to put Mr. Drysdale in a cage. And you should have heard what he called Miss Jane. <laughs> Please let me handle this. Well, that's fine, Mr. Drysdale, but we better be moving along. Wouldn't want to bother the queen at supper time. You are going to see the queen? Well, we ain't going to have supper with her. Just want to give her back the deed to Canada. And then we got to get to our castle and commence fighting the War of the Roses. Now, oh, Granny. Did you say the War of the Roses? Have you heard of it? <laughs> but of course. Every schoolboy has heard of the War of the Roses. You see that, Jed? It's all over England that we run out on the feud. They've even got it in school books. <laughs> Granny, please, let me handle this. You go and lie down. You're burning up with fever, you silly goose. <laughs> 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 Oh, 
to say. What kind of a vehicle is this, then? Oh, this here is a Royal Truck and Buzzard Launcher. I'm waiting for the Royal Family. <laughs> royal Family? Yeah. The Earl of Clampett and his kin. Oh, there's a couple of commoners with him, though. Mr. Drysdale and Miss Jane. Mr. Drysdale? Well, that's the American gentleman I'm here to show for. Oh. Stop honking that thing, General. Mr. Drysdale will be honking back. Where is he? He's got something of mine. He's trying to explain goose fever to the inspector. Well, let's head for the palace. Well, what about Mr. Drysdale? He ordered his own car here. Why would he do that? I'll tell you why. With every schoolboy in London talking about the War of the Roses, he's ashamed to be seen with them. Tell Mr. Drysdale we'll be waiting in front of Buckingham Palace. Hurry up, Jethro. Folks is already pointing a finger of shame. <laughs> Truck to London. It's dandy for sightseeing. Yeah, and we're the sight everybody is seeing. <laughs> Did you see how folks are staring and pointing at us? They know we run out on the field. Ah, oh, Granny. She's right, Uncle Jed. Ain't no other reason they'd be laughing at us. Pay no attention to her. Just drive on to the palace. We got business with the Queen. <laughs> Mr. Drysdale? Yes. Well, this is your car, sir. Oh, well, where are the hillbilly? If you're referring to the Earl of Clampett and his family, sir, they went off in the royal truck. They've gone? Yes, uh, they said they wait for you in front of Buckingham Palace. Oh, no. Do you think you can beat them there? Well, considering the car and the driver, sir, I'd say it was a sure thing. <laughs> where are we, Jethro? We're in what's called Hyde Park. Good. Pull up to them bushes and let's hide. <laughs> Keep going, Jethro. Anybody see a street sign? I seen one, Paul. It says this here's Rotten Row. Stop right here, Jethro. This is where we belong. Rotten Row. Drive on, boy. <laughs> Is that the Queen's Palace? No, sir. This here is the Tower of London, where the royal prisoners are beheaded and flogged and such. What'd you stop here for? Because I'm tired of folks pointing and laughing at us for running out on a few. You think they ain't gonna laugh at us here? Four chickens sitting on a truck. <laughs> well, if they laugh at us here, I just haul the rascals into the tower and set the royal flogger on them. Drive on, boy. Heads are gonna roll. We is gonna roll now. Head for the palace. So what he said, Jethro, everybody else has laughed at us. Might as well let the queen have some fun. <laughs> Jethro should have told us he didn't know how to get here. Didn't want you to think I was stupid. Oh, no chance of that. <laughs> well, uh, let's go in and give the deed to Canada back to the Queen. Now, wait. First, I'll have to arrange an audience. Well, we don't want to do it in front of folks. <laughs> no, I, I mean the Queen won't see you without an appointment. I know it. She's heard of the War of the Roses, too. <laughs> how soon you reckon she'll see us? Not till we've cleared our name. Will you let Mr. Drydale talk? Well, it may take several days. Meantime, why don't we all go to the hotel and have a good night's rest? Follow us, Jethro. Miss Hathaway and I will go in and make arrangements. You want us to come along? No, no, no. Wait here. We might have to try another hotel. <laughs> Hear that, Jed? We might not be able to get in. Reckon they heard about the few, too. Yeah, they got nothing to do with it. It ain't, huh? Oh, soldier, come here. Yes, madam. Have you heard about the War of the Roses? Oh, indeed, madam. 
See? What do you know about it? Well, it's probably the most famous feud in the history of England. It involved two families, two royal houses. You know how it started? Well, there's some debate as to which house uh, first let loose the dogs of war. Excuse me. I can tell him which house let loose the dogs. It was me that was let loose on. Are you satisfied, Jed? Well, Granny, it's only natural that a soldier might have heard, but I can't believe everybody has. Wait, will you tell me something? Does everybody in the hotel know about the War of the Roses? Oh, definitely, sir. That doesn't. It's bad enough to be laughed at on the street, but I don't aim to move in here and live with it. Me neither. Me neither. Let's go on out to the castle. Yeah, Paul. Come on, Jed. Well, all right. Tell Mr. Drysdale the Clampets is going to their castle. He means chicken house. <laughs> Thank you for alerting us, Mr. Drysdale. Yes, I'll have them phoned, sir. Good day. Tetley? Yes, Mr. Farish. The Clampets are driving out from London. Assemble the staff in the courtyard. We must give them a royal welcome. At once, Mr. Fashion. Now, just a word of caution. Let us not mention the presence of the Clampett family to our friends in the next castle. Colonel Dumbarton has not forgotten the Black Knight, Master Jethro, riding through his prize roses. <laughs> Excuse me, Mr. Favisham, sir. A group of gypsies is approaching the castle. Really? Yes, and they're driving a most disreputable-looking vehicle. These vagabonds are going to spoil the arrival of the Clampets. <laughs> Mr. Tate, those vagabonds are the Clampets. Tate, stay. Stay. Seem very fond of you, sir. They're calling your name. <laughs> no, no, they usually call me Major or Mr. Domo. They think Pavisham is a greeting. Pavisham, Mr. Domo! And welcome to all of you from all of us. Mr. Drysdale would like you to ring him at the, the hotel as soon as possible. I'll do that right away. Yes. Jethro, uh, you towed in the bag. Hey, I'm a knight. We got lots of churls for such things. And they'll take care of that. Uh, Mr. Tetley, everybody. Uh, Mr. Domo, yes, I want to have a word with you. <laughs> Mr. Domo, I want to ask you something about them folks in the next castle. Oh, yes, madam. Colonel Dumbarton. He's a colonel. A retired of Her Majesty's Indian service. He's an Indian fighter? That's all in the past, madam. Though I must say, he likes to run his castle in a military manner. I'm afraid he's in for trouble. Oh, you've nothing to fear from the Colonel, madam. Uh, confidentially, the old gentleman is usually in his cups. Gentlemen, the Queen. The, the Queen. queen. <laughs> Prepare to fire the sunset gun. Jethro, Ellie Mae. Well, young'uns, I'm afraid we've got our feuding cut out for us. The old fella in the next castle is an Indian fighter. <laughs> One cup at it. Let's go over and jump him right now. No, Jethro. Let him make the first move. Sounded like a cannon. He's fired the first shot. The War of the Roses is on! The war! Say goodbye to Jed and all his kin. They would like to thank you folks for kindly dropping in. You're all invited back next week to this locality to have a heaping helping of their hospitality. Hillbilly, that is. Set a spell. Take your shoes off. Y'all come back now. Here. Yeah.